welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, our topic is going to be Gerand and Gerand phrases. But before that, if you are new in this channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, click the notification bell in order to be updated with my next video. At syempre, share na rin para mas marami pang matuto. Now, I've said last time that before we proceed with our next topic, we are going to have a check-in first of your answers. Now, this question is about the active and passive voice. For number one, his attitude was ridiculed by his friends. Our verb phrase is was ridiculed. Notice, nauna yung helping verb was followed by past participle. So this is passive voice. Kasi nauna yung helping verb na was and then followed by Followed with past participle. Now, take note. Yung question dun sa comment last time, kung kailan daw ginagamit ang passive voice. Notice here, the emphasis in this sentence is on the object or the receiver of the action. Dito sa present. His attitude. Nandito ang emphasis. Wala dito sa subject or dogger of the action. Next, number two. The president protects the people. Our verb is protects. Notice, wala siyang helping verb dito. So, this is active. And, here, the emphasis is on the doer of the action or the subject. Nandito ang emphasis. That's why, this is under the active voice. So, number one, ang emphasis ay nasa receiver of the action or object. Dito naman sa, sa active, ang emphasis ay nasa subject or doer of the action. Number three, the treasurer will collect fees for the field trip. Our verb phrase is will collect. Nauna ang helping verb, will. Followed with Collect. Now notice, here, the emphasis is on the doer of the action, treasurer. At dito sa verb phrase, wala ritong past participle. Wala. So, this is under active voice. And again, take note that the emphasis is on the doer of the action, the subject. Okay. So, this is active. Number four, the trip was postponed because of the storm. Now, in this sentence, the emphasis is on the receiver of the action or object. Here is, nandito ang emphasis. Not, okay, when the doer of the action here is not Emphasize. Now, again, the way phrase starts with a helping verb. This one, helping verb, followed with a past participle. So this is passive. Number five, Ben is being called up in the office because of a complaint. Now, notice we have a helping verb. And it is followed by a past participle. Now, Ben here is not the doer of the action. This is the receiver. Receiver of the action or object. So, in this third phrase, is being. Helping verb huh? is followed by a past participle called. So, this is passive. Again, number one, passive. Number two, active. Number three, active. Number four, passive. Number five, passive. Alright. Now, we are going to proceed to our next topic. The uh, gerund and gerund phrases. Now, first, we need to define first what is gerund. Gerund is a form of a verb that acts as a noun. 
Okay. Remember, it is a form of a verb. But, in a sentence, it is not acting as a verb, but it is acting as a noun. Right, like this one. Swimming is fun. Our gerund here is swimming. If you are going to look this up in the dictionary, swimming is not a noun, but it is a verb. But here, in this sentence, it is not functioning as a verb, but it is functioning as a noun. Because it is the subject of the sentence. Now, to prove that, para mapatunayan natin na ito talaga ay na nagpa-function noun, we are going to replace this with a real noun. Say, for example, we are going to replace this with basketball. Okay. Basketball is fun. It's a noun. So, kapag ganito, pwede mo siya palitan ng tunay na noun, then it is a gerund. Next, he appreciates my singing. Now, here our gerund is singing. Ito ang ating gerund. Now, notice, singing, uh, swimming and singing, both ends in ing. If you are going to look this up in the dictionary, it is a verb under present participle because it ends in ing. But in this case, it is not functioning as a verb, but it is functioning as a noun. Like this one. He appreciates my singing. Para mapatunayan natin, we are going to replace this with a noun. He appreciates my Okay, shoes. He appreciates my shoes. O pareho. So, here, this is not functioning as a verb but as a noun. Okay. Now, here are some uses of gerunds. The first use is, it is used as subject in the sentence. Like this one. Running is a good exercise. Our gerund here is running. Again, Running is a, is a uh, word that if you are going to look this up in a dictionary, the dictionary will tell you that this is a verb or present participle because it ends with ing. But in this case, it is not functioning as a verb, but it is functioning as a noun because it is used as subject in the sentence. Okay. Number two. Direct object. He mastered cooking. Now, our verb here is mastered. To find the direct object, we need to ask the question, what? He mastered what? The answer is cooking. So, cooking is our direct object. But, this direct object looks like a verb kasi it ends in ing but in this case it is not functioning as a verb but as an object or noun and in this sentence this is our subject our verb has an object so this is transitive verb so this kind of sentences under STD DO. Next. Now, remember, our gerund is cooking. Okay. Now, to prove again, if this is really acting as a noun, just replace cooking with any noun. Palitan mo ito ng kahit na anong noun. So, for example, he mastered basketball. Oh. Correct, di ba? Okay, next. Indirect object. My friend gave singing a try. Now, to find the direct object, the indirect object, we need to find first the direct object. Unahin muna ang direct object. And to find the direct object, we need to ask the question, what? First. My friend gave what? The answer is, a try. So, a try is our direct object. My friend gave what? 
atrai. Next step is ask the question, to what or to whom? My friend gave what? A try. To what? The answer is singing. So singing is our indirect object. I no, it's not. This is singing. This is our indirect object. This is our verb. Gave here is our transitive verb. And friend is our subject. So we have STD, IO, DO. Now, our gerund is acting as an indirect object. Take note, meron siya itong ING. So, this is not acting as a verb, but it is acting as a noun. Alright, the next use of gerund is, it is used as object of a preposition. Like this one. Always pray before eating. Our preposition is before. And then the object of preposition is eating, which is our gerund. Okay. Now, here, eating is not functioning as a verb, but it is functioning as a noun. Next, number five, predicate numerative. Our example is, his favorite hobby is reading. By the way, to find if a sentence is under predicate nominative, try to invert the sentence. Kung pwede itong balik rin na hindi nababago ang idea, then it is under predicate nominative. Like this one. His favorite hobby is reading. Our predicate nominative is reading. That means, this is our subject because the sentence is inverted form. So, to clarify that, we need to rewrite the sentence in normal order. Like this. Reading is my, is his favorite hobby. Now, notice our verb is a linking verb. A sentence is, uh, it is, a predicate nominative is the subject, is connected to the predicate with a linking verb. Ito lang siya. Linking verb lang ang pwede mag-connect sa subject at sa predicate under predicate nominative. So, here our subject is reading. So, kapag nabalik tayo nyo siya, ito na siya ang subject, then, in the original sentence, this is also our subject. Pero ang tawag nito ay hindi subject, but it is called predicate nominative. Yan, predicate nominative siya. Pag nabalik tayo nyo na siya, ang predicate nominative ay magiging subject. This is if the verb it used is a linking verb. Kapag action verb yan ay hindi pwede. Okay. Next, gerund is also used as a positive. Now, and our example, her favorite hobby, acting, made her popular. By the way, pag sinabi natin a positive, it is a word that gives additional information or describes the previous word. Like this one. Acting. It means that acting describes hobby. Huh? In other words, itong hobby ay itong acting ay iisa lang. Acting refers to hobby. So, Pag ganito, pwede mo siyang tanggalin nang hindi nababago ang idea sa sentence. Like this one. Her favorite hobby made her popular. Ginagamit lang ito para magkaroon ng additional description of the previous word. Itong hobby. Okay. So here, acting is an appositive 
which is functioning not as a verb but as a noun. So this is our gerund. Alright, this is now how we are going to determine if a word is functioning as a gerund, verb, or participle. Now in this example, the audience is shouting. Now, here we have the verb shouting. It ends in ing. But it is accompanied with a helping verb. So, we have here a verb phrase. Verb phrase. And shouting is part of a verb phrase. Because we have a helping verb and then accompanied with a main verb. So, shouting here is acting as part of a verb phrase. For example, the guard noticed the shouting students. We have another shouting here. Notice, both examples ends with ing. Now, the guard noticed the shouting students. Now, shouting is followed with students. So here, shouting is not functioning as a verb. Because the verb in this sentence is this one. This is the verb. Notice. So shouting here is functioning as a participle. What kind of participle? It ends with ing. So it is called present participle. Okay. This is functioning as participle. Again, a participle that is, ends in ing is called present participle. Next, the shouting continued here. Shouting is functioning as subject in this sentence. And since it is functioning as subject, and also it is functioning as a noun, then it, this is our gerund. This is how you are going to determine if a word that ends in ing is functioning as a gerund, participle, or verb phrase. This is a participle. The participle is always followed by a noun. Yeah. Present participle followed with a noun. Okay. Alright, before we end this session, we are going to have a short quiz and we are going to check this in our next meeting. For number one, uh, by the way, we are going to determine if the underlined word is functioning as a subject, direct object, indirect object, object of preposition, predicate nominative, or a positive. Or number one, trying is always the best answer. Underline word is trying. We just finished answering the questions. Underline word is answering. He wants to be the top in the in banking. Banking is our underlined word. The last part in the program is dancing. And then, his best move, dunking, made the audience cheer. And the right word is dunking. Alright? Shout out nga pala sa aking editor, the creator of the, the Green Tongue, as well as sa aking videographer, the creator of Feed the Mind TV. Now, if you learned something in this video, please don't forget to subscribe, like, click the notification bell in order to be updated. And, siyempre, share na rin para mas marami pang matuto. Thank you very much for watching. See you again.